everyone welcome back to my channel so today i have another watch me work and it's over this abstract art pop arty comic inspired look and i think it's so fun y'all know this client well at this point you know she always gets fun sets so this is her previous set and you if you haven't watched the video on these nails go ahead and do so this set was five weeks old, five weeks in one day. So I'm going to start off by taking off her polish and removing um, the flames as I see it necessary. Um, for her thumb, I was going to do a lighter color. We ended up changing the design on the thumb in the end. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the flames completely from this nail. Now I knew getting into this set that it was going to be time consuming because of all the hand-drawn artwork so I wanted to kind of reduce the amount of time spent filing it down filing the nails down to remove the flames um, as much as I could so I only removed the flames or the pieces that absolutely needed to be removed so around the cuticle area basically all of them got filed off because it was a little more thicker trying to encapsulate the flames around the cuticle area than I would you know normally like also, I didn't want any of those hard edges of where the flame started at the cuticle area, which is, you know, now grown out, of course. I didn't want that protruding through or wearing down or sticking out. So I went ahead and removed it. And I also removed any of the flame stickers, the decals that were towards the edges of the nails, because I also didn't want that to have any potential to wear away. And then the flames come sticking through or peel the layers of the um the builder gel apart i don't know if you've ever experienced that but i have trying to encapsulate like um like angel paper that iridescent paper if you get it too close to the edge it can separate um the layers of like i did it with acrylic and it separated so i didn't want to run across that so I made sure if there's anything right immediately close to the edge, I removed it and around the cuticle area. But other than that, if it didn't need to be filed off, I didn't file it off and that was just to save time. And because our design I knew would be covering it on most fingers. If you're doing something sheer or lighter color, depending on you know what you have beneath, you may have to file down, but it's always great to be able to save time and not have to file down. And so I'm just showing you guys the power of this red baron bit. Literally, even though this is sped up, you can see just one swipe and that gel polish is off in that area that the bit was applied. So it's a great bit. Always use this bit at 20,000 RPMs or more. It needs to be used at a very, very high speed. Otherwise, it can cause heat and it can catch and skip. You don't want it. It sounds scary to turn it up that high, but it really needs to. So this portion is in real time with the skiver bit. And like I always say, you want to hold this as flush to the natural nail as possible as not to cause any damage, ring of fire, indentations. And you could see that um, I'm lifting up that dead skin from the nail plate, which is the cuticle. And it can get a little tough sometimes. And if you're just newly starting out, I know some people are confused. Like, how do I know I'm not filing up the actual nail you can feel and literally see the skin that has grown. So you may need to whip you out some, some readers, a magnifying glass, and look at some diagrams and just study what cuticle growth on the nail plate looks like so you be can become familiar because sometimes you'll see um, like chunks of skin flaking off. And some people think it's damaging to the nail or I'm chunking off pieces of the nail and know it's a dead skin that needs to be removed it's just grown so thick so now I'm using the round bit and this bit is to exfoliate the um, epinicium which we call the cuticle area and remove all that hanging skin as you can see and I use this bit going both directions you can also use the skiver bit going both directions and what I mean is use your um, e-file going forward uh, or backward and it depends on if you're right-handed or left-handed. Even if you're left-handed, you can use these bits both ways in order to get different crevices and different angles on the nail and get that skin lifted up. These pieces were a little stubborn and they are dead skin. So I just flicked them up as you can see and nicely clipped them. 
just to make it look nice. This is not living skin. Absolutely dead. Perfect to clip away. Okay, so I went ahead and cleansed the nails, dusted them off, sprayed them down with some alcohol. And then I'm going in with my clear rubber base. I also swiped the nails with acetone quickly before I went and applied this rubber base. That's just to dehydrate the nail and cleanse it, disinfect it, everything like that. So I'm just applying this to the natural nail and fading it down to the rest of the nail. You don't need to paint this from cuticle to free edge. It's pointless. It's a waste of product. You just mainly want to get it on that natural nail. So just basically painting it, painting it on, get it as close to the cuticle area and the sidewalls as possible. I'm sorry for any blurriness in this whole video going forth. Just disclaimer, I'm sorry. <laughs> so next I'm going in with my Cosmetic Pink Builder. And I'll be starting out... Well, first off, I want to say this brush is from like Michael's or Hobby Lobby. So I'm sorry, but if you want a good brush, you can always I have a link below to Alpha brushes that have really affordable quality brushes. I like the um, I think it's the gold or the yellow um, Taclon ones, I believe they're called. Anyways, they have a few gel brushes, but those are the ones I like with the white handle. You'll see them on the site. Go explore. Um, but you can see I applied a slip layer, which means I just applied a layer, I polished it on, and that's to tell our gel where to go. Then I'm taking a bigger bead of gel, as you can see, and floating it down and moving it where I want. You can see I grab some more and I'm placing it where I want and I'm just floating it. Now this is sped up so it looks, it always looks more aggressive, but I'm very lightly moving it where I want it to be. This cosmetic pink um, gel, it's... A thicker one in the light elegance line so it doesn't really self level if you move it around and I believe the term is thick thick tropic and I may be wrong but when you agitate it it kind of loosens up or becomes um, like more liquidy it changes the viscosity of it um, so that it is a little bit thinner so from just moving it back and forth and working it down the nail, it does kind of self level a little more. Um, but so keep that in mind. But you can see I'm just using the very, very tip of the brush just to guide that gel and tell it where I want it to go. So you can see again, I'm doing a slip layer, which means a thin layer. I'm applying like polish and this is saying, hey, gel, this is where I want you to disperse to. Then I'm grabbing a bigger bead of the gel and I'm just putting it on and I don't have to worry about getting super nice and tight to the cuticle area because I did that when I was polishing it on. So I don't have to worry about getting like flooding the cuticle area much, but I also don't have to worry about getting it clean because if you can polish, you can get a nice cuticle area with gel. So once I float it on, it'll disperse everywhere I want it to go. And I just kind of lightly move it if I need to. And then we're good to go. And even if you have inconsistencies with the gel, it's so much easier to file. It's so much softer. So it's, it's easy to take care of. <laughs> so my client put her finger touching. And this is what we have. A little mistake. <laughs> so that's easy to fix. I just cut the part that was protruding out off and I seen that the nail once I clipped it the actual structure was just fine I just had to file it and smooth it on out so no harm no foul so next I'm going in with the cross cut bit and this is going to smooth out the surface of our nail this is what I'm going to be using for our finished filing this is the only bit I'm going to be using for our finished filing today so I've already shaped the nails I know you're saying I wish you would show that on camera maybe one day when I get everything together and find a way to record it well I'll do it um, but for now I apologize but I did shape them off camera and now I'm going in and finish filing the surface removing any lumps bumps inconsistencies um, this nail got a little thick with the builder towards the free edge so I'll be working to thin that out and just um you'll see me maybe some points going under the nail and filing it's because her nails curve these are her natural nails guys these are her natural nails 
she maybe I think she has one that has like a sculpt on the tip just the very very tip um, from a few videos ago but they curve they twist they do all types of stuff we don't worry about fixing them she likes them she's happy she's the one that's you know paying for the service so just just backspace that comment you were gonna leave saying why are her nails okay just let it go <laughs> and the cross cut bit if you're not familiar is basically like a sanding band except it doesn't wear out as fast as a sanding band you don't have to dispose of it and like i said gel is so soft that's all we need it's ready to go after that so i just want to show you guys me and my client took so long to figure out this design and i actually had to sketch it out and write out what colors went where and everything like that don't be afraid to do it if it needs to be done <laughs> so these are the colors we're going to be using a whole bunch of madam glam gel bottle this is color club that's another gel bottle color and this number 54 i believe is called gilly now if i'm pronouncing that right g-i-l-l-y i may be wrong but they changed from numbers to names a while back i'm using the bambina liner brushes this is the perfect black and perfect white i know if you haven't watched that madam glam reveal video you should watch that and see all the perfect collection this is perfect red and I'll also be using perfect yellow you guys the that whole collection is awesome you can use code perfect tabitha for 30 percent off just the month of july this month only but you know if you're in the market for some perfect colors there you go and i'm using my wildflowers liner brush it's the long one it's the one you see me use so many times it's done so many sets it knows what it's doing i actually have two of them and i believe i use both i kind of interchange them like especially if i'm using black and then like a lighter color so i can just kind of keep one loaded because i'm i use a lot of black in this set so i kind of keep one loaded with black and use the other one to change it from the pink to the yellow the red stuff like that so I'm just applying the base colors and I establish that first. What nails need to be which color? Do they need to be solid? What needs to go on? And I went ahead and applied two coats. I know this hand was gonna be the cartoon looking hand or like animated, I don't know how to call it, the outlined hand. <laughs> and the other hand is gonna have our more detailed art. So because I've already had it drawn out, I knew that you know, that nail needed to be white. This one needed to be the, what color do you call that? It's not even like a, it's not aqua. I'm usually so good at naming colors, but I don't even know what to call that color. Maybe because it's like six in the morning and I haven't slept. Who knows? <laughs> so I'm establishing the base colors. I went ahead and applied two coats. Of course you cure in between coats. Cure it per the manufacturer's guidelines. And now I'm going in with my striper brush and I distributed that Presto art liner onto, well, I call it a palette, but it's just a, a nail form. <laughs> um, and I'm going in with the liner brush, as you can see, and I'm just outlining the shape of the nail and I'm slowly outlining it and looking at the shape that I'm establishing. I wanted to make sure that you could definitely see these lines, but I didn't want to take over her nail. So I'm kind of trying to find a balance and also keep it clean around the cuticle area, the side walls and everything like that. So you can see I'm gradually thickening up the line. I'm adding more to one side, more to the other. I'm looking from multiple angles because um, on the side of the nail, the line actually looks pretty thick, but face on, it doesn't really. And I'll go ahead and um, show you a clip. So you see from the side that it does, the line looks like it's there. It looks fine, thick. But if you look face, head on, you can't really see it. So I'm trying to make sure head on that I can see that line, even though it looks like it's getting thick on the sides. I want to make sure it's balanced from the left side to the right and basically the silhouette of what I'm drawing the black line is giving me that perfect stiletto or coffin shape when I look head on I'm basically drawing in my coffin shape <laughs> so I went ahead and cure that and I'm adding the light line 
Now you could do this multiple ways. In the picture that we referenced, they actually outlined the white part in black. We didn't want to do that. And you could add a little white line, a little two dots at the top. Just feel free to explore with this. Um, what I would say is I would probably do all the nails the same pattern. So you can see I have the light line on the same left side with one little dot at the top. I think that probably will be best to give it like a cohesive look and maybe like a more realistic look like the shine of the light is hitting them all the same. So I went ahead and did that real simple with that Presto Art Liner um, and that's a gel. And then I'm going in with a Daily Charm Matte Top Coat and go ahead and apply that and cure it in the light. I think giving these nails a matte look makes them look even more, I don't know if realistic is the word, but it just it just brings out the look so much. So after I mattified that, I went in and I added more white with that uh, Presto Bambina Art Liner just to make that white more pigmented. Then I took my Opre um, top coat and it is shiny and I'm just tracing over that white line only. Now, this helps so much. It's just a little detail because that white now is literally shiny. So we're mimicking shiny by adding the white, but the white is literally shiny. So in real life, it helps so much with making that just look so much, I don't know if realistic is the word because we're trying to draw something that's fake, but it just set it off. And you'll have to trust me in real about the real life situation. So definitely a tip if you're going to be doing that. So as far as our next hand goes, I'm starting with the pinky and I'm just doing these simple stripes. Now my tip for you when you're doing stripes and long lines with the liner brush is to hold the brush as parallel to the nail as possible so you don't want to stick it up like you're writing with a pen like the tip perpendicular with the nail or at a very high angle you want to keep it at a lower angle it doesn't have to be completely flat parallel but at a, at a lower level and th that stroke was a really right here you can see how flat I'm holding it, and that'll help you make a long line. So I did two coats of those lines and cured in between each coat. Now I'm taking the Crystal Ninja Super Tight Swarovski Glue and applying that at the cuticle area and just doing these little crystals. These are Swarovski Crystal AB in size 12, I think nine and five or seven and five, one of those. And this is the only bling we'll have. And it was the inspiration set from Helen. Uh, I'll I'll be sure to leave a link to her IG or her IG handle below to give her credit. Her set was perfect. This set is okay. <laughs> so, and you'll see me. I'm going to stumble and I'm going to struggle in this set. And y'all are about to see <laughs> here soon. Um, so... Those crystals went ahead and dry. That glue dries fairly quickly. It doesn't dry too quick that you can't work with it, but it doesn't take so long. So I went in with a crystal glue and just sealed around it. Um, you can use like a Ugly Duckling Stick It. You can use, you know, various like Jenny Secret, whatever type of crystal glue, just to make sure that they're sealed around. I cured that and then I went in with my matte top coat. Again, the Daily Charm is what I'm using throughout this whole set. And I applied it to the nail, made sure I went around the crystals, not on top. And you can see it's cured, nice and matte, crystal sparkly, and sealed in. So next, you see, this is where you start seeing me stumble and the things I wish I could have changed. This nail, I wish I would have done smaller dots. No, I wish I would have done more concentrated dots. So instead of having the few that I have, I wish I would have had like, way more like put them closer together more concentrated is the word and I think that would have helped with this design also as you'll see based on the colors that we chose and where they were and how they were scattered just the whole scheme we decided to do red for the drip and now it wasn't till it was completely polished on that I realized this kind of looks like blood <laughs> The only thing kind of saving it is how we outlined it and made it like more cartoony, I guess, or more animated, more pop art. But wish I didn't, we would have thought about that. So 
there that is. <laughs> but, you know, it's in retrospect. I probably wouldn't have done the red and changed the dots. But here we are. We're living with it. We're going with it. And just to show you that everything isn't always perfect at all. And um, so you see me doing the drips. If you haven't watched my drip nails, I don't know how many videos back. You need to watch that video so you can get your drip game together. I'm just playing. Um, but you see my technique. I draw the line. I do a dot at the end of the line. And then I go in and I um, blend it in, kind of taper it in all together. I round out those spaces in between the drips just to make it, I guess, a little more realistic. I don't know how real this can look. Kind of stagger the drips at different levels. Again, to give it more character. And then that's it. So I'm going in with, I went ahead and cured that. I'm going in with my, um, that Presto art liner. And you can see me mess up. So I'm taking a, a brush and it has a little bit of alcohol on it. And I swipe that away. Now, I'm going to tell you, I should have used a shorter brush for this. I was in a rush because we took so long. I had an appointment and um, my client completely understood. She didn't know what she wanted at all. So she was absolutely fine. But just FYI, if you have a shorter brush to use, um, if you're in the wildflowers family still, like their magenta brush or their um, I believe it's like the golden brush, like the medium liner, or the short one. Go ahead and use that. For anything that's curved, it's better generally to use a shorter brush. It helps you maneuver around those curves better. So you can see I'm adding these light lines. I'm using the Presto brush. I didn't like that light line. So I removed it with a little alcohol in that brush and put in another one. So I went ahead and cured that. I'm curing... I'm constantly curing this stuff, you guys. So it just goes without saying. I'm curing in between coats, in between different pieces of art on the nail. I'm just curing. Okay, so it's matte. And I decided that I wanted it to be shiny. I thought it would bring out the the wet look. Um, I'm okay with it. <laughs> it's... It's cute. It was just like the only like shiny thing besides the crystals. I asked my client. She said she liked it, that it made it stand out. I'm not mad at it, but also kind of am. I don't know. <laughs> so next I'm doing a lightning bolt. Again, y'all, don't do this. What have I told y'all? Be better than me. Look at a picture. I had no reference for a lightning bolt. And it's like I forgot what it looked like. I don't even know. So you see, I'm just like messing with it and trying to figure out i'm like what does a lightning bolt look like because it's not this and i'm over here really trying to think about harry potter <laughs> and we decided we wanted we wanted back up please look at a reference picture when you're doing stuff i say it all the time just to make sure because you can be like me and it'll just fail you you won't know what something common looks like anymore that's how it happens <laughs> so um, I put, I did the lightning bolt, however I did it, it's there. And so you can see I'm adding these dots. It's, we had an inspiration pick. We wanted to do concentrated, bigger dots on one side of the nail and kind of fade out to smaller, more sparse dots. Now, this is something I would have changed also. I would have added a shadow, like a drop shadow, um, to this lightning bolt I think that would have made it look so much better like so much better I really wish like I could call her and be like girl come here and let me add a shadow to that nail can you come back so I could do that um and I also wish I would have looked at I really feel like if I looked at a picture of a lightning bolt I could have got the shape better and cleaner and nicer looking so y'all are just gonna hear me and my list of regrets through this video all in all it's it's a cute set I love this set I think it's awesome so I'm not taking away from that I'm not trying to negate that it's just you know and honestly I mean it's just a part of art part of life you know you look back and like hmm, I wish I could have did that differently 
But, you know, you're watching this video, so I guess you think it's cute. <laughs> so I went ahead and finished that design. You see, I added like a little just abstract art. My client, she wanted it abstract. She wanted it pop art. She So I'm trying to add those different elements that we decided on and established. She didn't want words or pictures or logos because the original picture we've seen had like a Superman logo, it had like OMG, and um, it had a face, and she didn't want those things. So it was a struggle on how to make it look still like pop art without those elements that were so pop arty. <laughs> like, you know, the pow, bang, zap. Like, those are very like comic book pop art style. And so it's like, how do you do that style with when somebody doesn't want those things? And so here we are. So you can see on this finger, I just drew basically a zigzag and I'm adding a shadow. That's the shadow that I did on this nail behind this like shape. I wish I would have added a shadow like this behind that lightning bolt. So for shadow, it's back to the basics. You know, I drew out, basically mimic that triangle peak just up and to the left or down is down and to the left. Both of them was to the left <laughs> because the light source is coming from the same side. So I'm just going in with this pink and we decided we would do symbols like, um, you know, like when they're cussing, it's just like different symbols. So we just decided on and that's not supposed to be an at sign. It's just supposed to be a swirl, a little excla exclamation point and a hashtag. That was what we agreed on. Because I was like, girl, we cannot leave this blank. She just wanted to do this blank. And I was like, I just don't think that'll be as cute. And she was like, yeah, I know, right? Well, what can we put in there? So we just went with symbols. She's like, I'm cool with shapes and symbols, just not actual words and faces and logos. And I forgot what a hashtag sign looked like. So again, y'all look at pictures because like I said, the most simplistic things... They'll just, they'll just leave your mind. And I had to tell her, I was like, girl, can you pull up Instagram? I forgot what a hashtag looked like. I couldn't think of which angle the, the lines went is what it was. If they were like diagonal, vertical, like straight up horizontal and vertical, or I couldn't remember. But anyways, I did two coats um, on those symbols. And now I'm doing these background lines. And again, I'm kind of working off an inspiration picture, but also what we had you know gathered together so you can see I'm doing these lines and I'm like trying to do them fast like oh it's all right they'll be fine and then I'm like mm, they're getting a little too wonky and crazy <laughs> like too much so I got it on the black and I'm just kind of erasing that with a dry brush with some alcohol and you can see I use that throughout this whole situation I'm using um, alcohol with my dry brush and that line was like so crooked. Once I erased that and kind of straightened it out, I really feel like it helped bring it together. And again, I'm, wipe, I'm wiping off that color from that black. And then I'm going in with a dotting tool. You can get a dotting tool from like eBay for like seven cents. Not literally, but they're so cheap. Or Amazon, just any dotting tool. I can't imagine a bad dotting tool. <laughs> um, and then I'm adding the dots in the inside of that shape and I was not going to outline these I'm not gonna lie I wasn't going to I knew they needed to but I was rushing <laughs> but I was like I, these really have to be outlined and I'm so glad I took the time out to do it because I think it made them look so much better so and it was very kind of tedious you can see me going in I'm real this is sped up all this is sped up but I'm like quickly trying to go in because once I backed out, because I'm working real close and sometimes I'm like tap the kind of kind of let it go. Once I backed out of it, and even though it was 100 percent perfect and the most clean lines, it, it ended up looking good. Now, I did clean this one up some with my little brush. This one got real crazy. I went ahead and cured that and then I applied my matte top coat and that was it. Now, I didn't show her thumb. Her thumb was solid yellow or perfect yellow. And the color from gel bottle, I think it's called Elderflower. Just polka dots on there. Just real quick. And so this is our final look. 
I love how it came out, even though there are things I wanted to change. Um, I sound like a broken record. Uh, it still came out so cool, especially this hand. I love it so, so much. So, you guys, leave your questions, comments, concerns. Don't forget to subscribe. It's so important. I really appreciate you guys. Bye.